This week on The Gadget Show, can you live without cash? In our most ambitious challenge yet, Jason and I are sent halfway across Europe to find out if technology has now made cold hard cash redundant. And John spends three whole days in the pub. Why? To find out whether the legendary Lazy Boy is the best gadget chair money can buy. All right. You're right, John. Yep, testing gadgets, of course. <laughs> Marvellous. Hello, and welcome to the Gadget Show. This week, we're trying to find out whether, due to technology, cash is becoming an outdated concept. Unsurprisingly, the producers of the show thought this might be yet another opportunity to set us a challenge. Yes, and I think this week they have surpassed themselves because it was very ambitious and very cold. So, let's go back to last Thursday. All Susie and I knew was where to meet and at what time. 8am, a cafe somewhere in Oxford. Do you know what, Suze? I actually feel really confident about this week's challenges. <laughs> do you really? I do. I think I'm going to take you out this time. Well, you haven't been very successful so far. Won the last one. Ah, oh, so, hang on a minute. You're on a winning streak of, ladies and gentlemen, one. Yeah, but, you know, a winning streak's got to start somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here we go. Marvelous. Which one's yours? This one's mine. OK, here we go. Dear Jason, your challenge is to live without cash. Dear Susie, your challenge is to live with just cash. You've got to buy clothes, food and flight tickets in preparation for a trip to Norway. Hurrah! Uh, you must problem. go there and back in, in a day. To buy a Viking helmet. Excellent! <laughs> and get a picture of yourself at the oldest ski jump in the world. Cool! You can only use technology to pay for things. At no point can you hand over any cash and credit cards can only be used over the internet. Quite difficult. Mm. Right, here's my rules. All purchases must be made with cold, hard currency. At no point can you use anything other than cash. Wow. What? Oh. 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 oh, oh, there's just loads and loads of wedges of money in here. You're so completely happy. <laughs> That's so funny. Your eyes genuinely lit up. No, How much? I, How much? Oh, uh, enough. Right, I'm going shopping. I won't need this. I'll just watch when you get ready. Full yeah. of cash. Hard cash. So, why are we doing this? Well, we've been set this challenge to test some theories. Apparently, by the year 2020, only 10% of all transactions will be by cash. So, most of us will never even see a note or a coin. And things are moving that way already. Last year, half the population of Britain used a credit card online, spending £22 billion in total, a large chunk of which was on auction sites. 79 million bargain-hunting purchases were made online last year. And the death bells are already ringing for cash. 14% of Brits actually throw coins away because they can't be bothered to carry them. Brilliant. I, I love this concept, you know, this idea of living without cash. Well, you know what? I'd never thought about doing that. And when I had that envelope of cash, I just thought, well, simple. What can possibly go wrong? Because you just don't think about it, do you? Our lives are changing so quickly. And this challenge for us this week was such an eye-opener. You've got to stick around for that. You're lucky I'm still speaking to you after what you did in that challenge. But I am. So come look at this. Help me do this. It's kind of right. like a jigsaw. Okay. Stay with me. John, come and help do this as well. This better be good, Perry. I was dozing off nice. Oh, it is good, John. Right, we've got to turn this... What do we do? ...into a picture. Go! Yes. Yeah. It's like a big jigsaw. It's, it's rasterising. What's oh. rasterising when it's at home? Well, it's, it's the process of taking a picture and turning it into a matrix of dots, you know, a little bit like newspapers do. OK, yeah, like printers. That's, yeah, that's exactly. That's Susie's mouth. You can tell it anyway. Ah, there you go. Essentially, this was a really popular process on Photoshop. It was so popular that they decided to make a website so that you could do this at home. It's called Rasterbator. I beg your pardon, The Rasterbator. What was that? I'm not being rude. Carry on. That's what the website's called. And all you have to do is upload your image and then you can print it off 20 metres high, you can make it. But if you download the actual application from the website, then you could print something, I don't know, the size of your house. Amazing. And you can print it on your own little printer at home. Yeah, That's A4 the beauty bits. of it. And A4 bits just to get mm, all together. Have you got a beard? Because yeah. if so, I could just pop that. No, I have not got a beard. Sorry, Susan. Now, chairs, or more specifically, gadget chairs. And what's apparently the daddy of them all, the really rather massive lazy boy. 
Thanks to a starring role in the hit TV series Friends, it's become a must-have adornment for any bachelor pad. But these days, it's not the only gadget chair out there. There are now gadget chairs, it seems, to do more or less anything you want, short of uh, cooking you a pizza or finding you a girlfriend. So, does the lazy boy still have what it takes? To find out, I went along to the Gadget Show team's favourite local to do some serious couch potatoing. Morning, Tommy. Morning, John. What are you up to today? I'm here to test that. The Lazy Boy Cool Chair. Lazy. Lazy Boy claimed to have invented the reclining chair. Their first chair wasn't a particularly comfortable looking affair, though. It was made out of bare wood. Once they added upholstery, they started selling them by the million and have been ever since. This one costs £999. It's got a very satisfying, if rather retro, mechanical reclining lever and lots of splendid gadget features. What a point, John. No thanks, I've got my own. You see, in here there's a fridge, and over here there's a phone, albeit a rather traditional corded one. The best bit, though, is controlled by this unit here, the massage functions. There are up to five separate zones covering your thighs, your bum and your lower back. You can set it to have a wave motion or a pulsing effect, and you can control the intensity and the speed with these buttons here. There's even a variety button for a sort of massage shuffle play. And if you fancy getting warmer, you can turn up the heat for a really hot one. Sausage, egg and chips. Over here, please. Great. Ah, thank you very much. That's brilliant. This is actually a very, very comfortable chair. It's got great support for your thighs, your back and your bum. One drawback is the number of wires coming from it. And another is that massaging can be quite noisy, depending on the setting. But I want one in front of my telly at home. Morning, Tommy. Morning, John. What are you up to today? I'm here to test that. The Pyramat S2000 gaming chair. Games? It's a new generation of gaming chair designed by gamers for gamers, and it claims to take you right into the action of whatever game you're playing. This lead plugs into the audio output of your TV and takes the sound from the game into the chair, where it's amplified and fed through a five and a half inch subwoofer, which gives 30 watts of booming bass through your bottom. And that's supplemented by twin stereo speakers behind your ears. You having a point, John? No thanks, I'm driving. Woo. Actually, it's a good position for driving down here. I really feel like I'm in that noble, and the chair rocks backwards and forwards so you're not constrained at exciting moments. There are knobs down here to control the volume and the strength of the bass effect, and there's a headphone socket should the neighbours start to complain. And round here, there's a plug so you can connect your MP3 player. Sausage, egg and chips. Over here, please. Oh. Thank you. But I don't think you'd actually want to listen to music through the Pyramat because the sound quality is rather poor. If you're used to a good surround sound system, you're going to find this very disappointing indeed. Even the sound effects through the seat are annoying rather than involving. I think it makes more sense if you connect it to something like a PSP or a Nintendo DS. Then you're getting better sound than you would through their own internal speakers. But £180, though, it's not that expensive. Something for the children's bedroom rather than the living room, perhaps. Morning, Tommy. Morning, John. What are you up to today? I'm here to test that. The multimedia armed chair. Comfy. This is a motion sensor chair that's built for watching blockbuster movies. It's a bespoke design and customers have a choice of two types of leather and 83 colours. When an action
action-packed film is released, Armed Chair's team of programmers examine it frame by frame to create so-called motion codes, which are stored in that black box over there, the motion controller on a hard drive. The box is connected at one end to your DVD player and at the other end to the chair via your computer. As soon as a movie starts playing, the controller listens to the audio stream from the DVD player. Within five seconds, it recognizes what film you're watching and sends the information to the chair. Then your multimedia experience begins. Have a point, John? No thanks, I'd uh, probably spill it. Hidden inside the chair are robot-like arms called actuators, which throw you around according to the instructions generated by the motion controller. In theory, they're capable of generating forces up to 2G. Sausage, egg and chips. Over here, please. Ooh. It's great fun, and it can work very well. During a battle sequence in a Star Wars movie, for instance, where you're looking through the front of a spaceship, it really did enhance the motion. But lots of movies don't have great action sequences. It doesn't seem to work so well when the action isn't from your point of view. Watching the outside of a spinning car, for example, while you're being thrown around in a circular motion is an effect that doesn't work for me. I really like the idea of this chair and some of the effects are great, but at the moment I'd only recommend one if you're very, very, very rich. I got you. John, three platefuls of sausage, egg and chips, was that absolutely necessary? Not necessary, but very enjoyable. So I, I take it that, um, out of the three chairs, this Lazy Boy is your favourite? Yes, I mean, it's not uh, the aesthetically the most pleasing thing in the world, but it is a lovely, comfortable old thing. You ought to try it. It's like a, a huge marshmallow chair made out of leather. <laughs> well, hang on a second. <laughs> That's the, the Friends moment, do you remember? Mm, the quick on the draw bit. I like that. Yeah. It is, it is comfy, I'll give you that. I see, yes. Oh, oh, come on! Mm, are you being supported in all the right places? No, the lower back support is extremely good. Ah, yeah, no backache in that. But I was disappointed, if I'm honest, with yep. the gaming chair because, you know, as a games fan, I've had all these peripherals over the years, you know, these kind of rumble cushions yep. and stuff, and it, it can enhance the gameplay. I could help you. I've yep. got a butt kicker. I, I beg your pardon? It's this. <laughs> Let's have a look. Ah, bit of iron work here. It claims to turn any chair into a forced feedback gaming chair. This one. Now, the, the actual vibrating bit goes behind the back of the chair. Do we have to um, lift it again? I think we have to, have to make tip contact, it forward, I guess, it? Tip it under there. That's good. And turn it up here and it vibrates from there. Does that, does that sort of noise give you any vibration or not? Does it? Yeah. Have some of that! Off of his head. <laughs> oh. Oh. You're not feeling oh. that. You're not feeling oh. that. Oh. You've got such a vivid imagination. Wow. I love that. I love that, John. Wow. When my character jumps up, you feel a kind of Ugh! And when she lands, it's like a Ugh! OK, so can you give the butt kicker a G rating? Certainly. Um, OK, you've got to get the right game with it, all right? With a nice big bass signal, but I'm going to give it three Gs. Mm, impressive. And what about your chairs, John? Let's start with the gaming chair. How many Gs? Well, it's good for the kids' bedroom, but probably a bit of a disappointment elsewhere. I'd probably say two Gs for that. OK, um, what about the multimedia chair, the expensive one? That is a fantastic idea, and it can work really well, but I think they've got to do a bit more work on it. But still, three Gs are great. Not, not bad. Yep. Finally, the Lazy Boy. Well, it's by far the best of the chairs, but it's not perfect. It's got all those wires hanging out the back, and uh, it doesn't actually look that brilliant. But still, four Gs. Right, now it's time to return to our challenge, and this is where it starts to get interesting. The idea was to see if in these modern technological times it's possible to live without cash. Jason and I were set the same mission to go to Norway and to complete various different tasks. The only real difference between us is that you could only buy things using cash, mm. and I could only pay for stuff using technology. So, after being set the challenge, it was time for a spot of shopping to buy exactly what we needed. For me, shopping started with an internet search for my flights. Even though I was flying at very short notice, I still managed to get a kind of good deal. £380 booked through BA's website. Apparently, 15,000 people a day book tickets this way. That works out to 87% of all BA flights. And a hire car, that's a great idea. I mean, I can get around really quickly and I can certainly do it online. Most car hire companies need a credit card as security when you pick up the car. But if you book through an agent, you can give them your credit card details, 
and they'll email you a voucher which covers everything. I had to wait till I got to the airport to buy my flight, but I could get some shopping done in preparation for the Norwegian climate. Hi, Suze. Hey, oh, nice, right, nice jacket. Yeah, what what you been up to? I uh, I just you know just relaxing really. I mean, because because I did all my stuff on the internet, got some wicked deals, really, really good prices on my flights. Yeah. Jace, did you know that it rains for up to 200 days every year in Norway? And um, also the coldest temperature ever recorded was minus 51 degrees. Oh, no, I knew that stuff, yeah? Yeah. So you need some really warm clothes? Yeah, I've got, obviously, I'm just here to buy some stuff, so I'll, I'll just go have a look around, yeah? Just one more thing, yeah? Yeah. How are you going to pay for it? With my credit. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, Susan, look, I've got, I've got technology on my side, all right? It can't be that difficult. Thanks very much, yeah. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Good, yeah, I've got a proposition for you. I, I, I can't use my credit card for various reasons, but I, um, I want to buy a jacket. I've seen it online. So now, if I, that's the jacket there. Have you yeah. got that in store? Yes, I do. Oh, brilliant, OK. So if I buy it now online, put my details in, can I just pick one up in a medium, please? No, unfortunately, so you don't offer that service. But you've got, you, I can, you've actually got the jacket. Look. This is the coat, look. There's my credit card, look. Got, look, there, it says paid on my screen. Can I not just grab the thing and go? No, no, it's, it's on your way to your house at the moment. Lots of internet shops only sell on the internet. You might live next door to them, but the chances are their stock is somewhere in the Midlands, in a massive warehouse. Well, well, just a hat then, I'm gonna be freezing, mate. In this case, I can't get my clothes because the website and store are two completely different entities. The coat's on its way to my house, and there's nothing I can do. Excuse me. Yeah? Excuse me a minute. Yeah, can I just pay for these, please? Yeah, of course. You just move your laptop? Yeah, no problem. Thanks. How are you getting on? Oh, it's going great. Yeah? yeah it's really good, yeah. Yeah, it looks... What have you got, then? Um... I've just gone for the black. The black what? Uh, the hat. Or maybe I'm not decided yet. Thank you. Yeah. I think you'll find that it's all there, my cash. Good. Time is of the essence. I know that. I understand that. Yeah, yeah. But, um, have got to hurry up. So shove it in there. It'll be great. Thanks for your help. All right, thanks. Yeah, see you at the airport yeah, then, yeah? See you there, have yeah, a good don't, one, don't yeah? Don't take too long. Oh, no, no, no problem. Look, Dan, just chuck him one of those novelty compass key rings, mate, and we'll call it quits, right? No. All right, cheers. So, it seems cash is still king on the high street. But that's changing. There's a revolution going on. And it's starting in a co-op store in a small Oxfordshire village. This store is home to a technology that could totally change the way we pay for things in this country. This till is at the vanguard of alternative payment methods. It uses a technology called pay by touch. It's got a fingerprint scanner, which when you touch, connects to your bank account, so you never need to use a card again. Hello. Hello. Your finger is scanned to access a pay by touch wallet that's connected by direct debit to your bank account. It's really simple and very secure. It doesn't actually scan your fingerprint, it scans points of interest on your finger, like where lines meet or end. They're unique to everyone and can't be copied. Useful when identity theft has gone up by 600% in the last five years. This technology is massive in America, where they've just signed up their three millionth customer, and it's available in over 2,000 stores. Over here in good old Blighty, though, you'll only find it in three co-ops in Oxfordshire. But who knows, if the trial goes well, it could well roll out nationwide. Anyway, Marianne, nice working with you, but I can't talk. I've got an hour to get to Heathrow. Where did I put my wallet? Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> See you later. It was down the motorway to Heathrow, where Susie was already waiting. I might have saved a load of time using cash in the shops, but that all changed when I reached Heathrow. I had to wait to buy my ticket, which is probably part of the reason why only 13% of tickets are sold this way. When I finally reached the front, I was in for a shock. <gasps> my bag of cash was taking a beating. I'd already spent nearly £200 on clothes and now over £600 on the flights. By booking online, I could use the express check-in facility. Yes, just in time. Express check-in. I put my credit card in the machine to confirm my identity, but importantly, no money was taken, so no rules were broken. This is great. 675,000 people use these machines every month. That's 18% of everyone flying from the UK. Not Susie, though. She had no credit card and no way of proving her identity, so was left queuing while I breezed through. 
Oh. Susie, just queuing up here with the other cash customers. Is that all right? I'm just in the express check-in queue. No one here, save me. I'll see you on the plane, yeah? All right, if you get there, I'm off for a Frappa Chapolino. You know, you're so cruel to me sometimes. I know, I know that. But what about that supermarket? No, a supermarket was fantastic. Awesome. Because you know what I hate? Trying to scurry around in my bag full of credit cards. Really oh, irritating. Well, you know what I love? What? Tech. Yes. Just futuristic stuff. I love that idea. But more impressive than that, the same people that supplied that system have supplied this. It's called True Me, and it's a kind of version for your home. True okay. Me. Yeah, what you do is you register with one single website. You put in all your details, your bank account details, your shipping address, which might be different to your home address. You know all those problems you have online when you're mm -hmm. trying to do stuff, yeah? And then, if you go to a website that's affiliated with them, say at Christmas, you want to do 15 different transactions in an evening, each one is just one swipe. So you, sw you swipe what on you're there, saying... look, light comes up. Just recognise my finger. That's a simple pair of socks bought, all right? One more swipe. Underpants for mum, all right? Yep. She's kinky like that. Look, rubber underpants, studs on the inside. That's just for myself. Why not? I've been working hard. But listen, so what you're saying is you haven't got to put the details <laughs> in every time. I can't believe you just said that. Before. Did I not say that? Let's move yeah. on anyway. The idea you don't have to put your details in, you that's, just swipe That's it. great, because that will save so much time and it is really irritating. How much is it? Uh, when it's released and the system is not online yet, I'll just say that, they reckon next year mm. uh, for, for a start date, less than £20. Oh, that's so worth it. Save all that typing. <laughs> Marvellous. You better get it changed, though, because it's the, you know... Hmm? You better get it changed. Wh why? Because it's the critical list. Oh, yeah. Right, obviously, you can see the climax to our challenge, Can You Live Without Cash, later in the programme. And it's a real eye-opener, so stick around for that. But now, as I said, the critical list. <laughs> This week on The Critical List, we're looking at clothing. John, what are you doing? And I'm why are we wearing these? I'm preparing a hug for you. <gasps> Marvellous. Because humans need about 30 to 50 bits of touchy-feely contact every day, and if they don't get it, they get depressed. Do we? So you need your hugs. But how do you get your hugs when you're the other side of the world? Well, you just don't get any, do you? I should know. Well, what you need is a cute circuit hug shirt, which is what these are. Ah! Oh, OK. How do they work, then? There are sensors in each of these red zones that record pressure and skin temperature mm. and send it to your mobile phone by Bluetooth. So I can send you a text message with all that information oh. in it and you get my hug. Send me a hug. I've just sent you one. OK. It says you have a hug waiting. Yes. Yeah. I want to feel it. Ooh! Mm. Mm. What do you think of it? It's like, um, in all the... Obviously, in all yeah. the red zones, you can feel a sort of slight vibration. Mm. Gives you a sort of warm sensation. Yeah. Oh, it's really nice to know that somebody's actually thinking about mm, you, you know, and wanted. sending you a hug. Because yes. it's a bit lonesome <laughs> being away all the time. Mm. Get a bit lonely. Mm. Oh, I like that. Yeah, what have you got? Oh, right, yes, what I've got. Um, I've got G gloves. Yeah. Right, and I'll put them on and show you. Because you know when you get your hands freezing cold and you, yeah. you can't type, can you can't play games or anything? Sure. And uh, these basically <clears throat> USB, stick them on the side of your laptop, and you can type and defrost your hands at the same time. Wow. Now, if I'm being honest, which we are on the gadget show, yeah. the design... Mm. Not for me, really. No, really. not for me either. All right. So, we need to work on that a little bit, I yeah. think. But I suppose if you're working outside and you have got to, you know, be on a laptop or yeah. something... I mean, can you actually feel the difference? Yeah, you can. And, and it sort of goes up 10 degrees in, in five minutes. There you can't heat your hands up too much, otherwise you get chill blains. Oh. Then you have to wee on your hands to get rid of them. Mm. How horrible. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so we're two-thirds of the way through the critical list. You've seen John's hug shirt, my G-gloves, and here's Jason. Hi, guys. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Would you like to explain yourself? Uh, certainly. I've, uh, well, I'm wearing um, a Stormtrooper outfit, which is taken from the original 1977, uh, 1976 moulds by Andrew Ainsworth, the original designer at, um, is it Shepperton? Shepperton Studios, yeah. it is, oh. yes. It's very, very cool. It costs you a lot of money, though, this. How much is it? £1,300. But it's original? Absolutely. Well, the, the, he the head is. Can I just say From the original oh. moulds. That, yes. <laughs> I always had a thing about stormtroopers. Uh, yeah? But um, I always expected them to wear, like, really cool boots. Oh, no, no, they wore these loafers. <laughs> yeah, if you look carefully on the uh, director's remix cut, they're wearing these shoes, exactly. <laughs> you know what would be really funny? If you wore that and you just went outside on the street. Probably you should say that, Suze. Oh, uh, can I can't take two shoes, please. Well, I'll have a flapjack for the droid as well. Oh, bless. He's a bit bashful. Don't mind him. Oh. 
you know what, Suze? Underneath <laughs> this costume, I'm completely naked. <laughs> Mm. You need help. Seriously, you do. It's time for us to take a break now, but coming up after the break is the climax to our Can We Live Without Cash Challenge. Don't go anywhere, you can't miss it. Right, it's time for the final instalment of our challenge, Can We Live Without Cash? We wanted to find out if it's possible in these technological days to get by without ever being allowed to handle cold, hard cash. Jason and I had a mission to go to Norway, buy a Viking helmet, have our picture taken at the oldest ski slope in the world and get back from Norway all within one day. The problem for me was that I had to do everything with just cash. And my problem was I only had technology to rely on. I was allowed to use my credit card, but only through the internet. So we pick up the story just after we've landed in Norway. Car rental, that's, that'll be me then. What do you mean? I'm going to rent a car, I'll sort it out on the internet. Can you give me a lift? No, I can't. It's not, well, I'd love to, Suze, but it's not the, you know, the competition rules don't allow that, do they? Well, I'm going to get a car as well, then. OK. My, uh... My voucher from the agent worked like a dream. There was no need for a credit card, and I was itching to get on the road. Uh, I asked for an AHA CD to be included. Can I uh, get my car with cash, please? No, sorry, that's not possible. We need a credit card when you pick up the car. There must be a way around this. Uh, okay. One moment, please. So, may I have your... Thank you. Um, Hi. What about if I paid a lot of cash? No, sorry. No, don't go. Thanks, Ernest. Wait, See ya. Please, Susie, please, you're embarrassing please. yourself, please. See you later. He's more likely to crash the car because he's a really rubbish driver and I'm a really good driver. Does it matter, Ernest? I'll take public transport. So I dumped my bags, got my cold weather gear on and joined a queue for the train. 25 quid and 20 minutes later... Train, train, train. And I only had two hours left to get into Oslo, get the Viking hat, pick it myself with the oldest ski jump in the world, and get back to the airport. I was in desperate need of a snack. The only problem was finding somewhere I could pay for things. Aha, look, loop. That's very important. It means I can actually buy some food. In this shop, is a really fantastic system that's been in development in Norway for the last two years and has just started to roll out across Europe. Loop lets me use my mobile phone to pay for things. Got a text messaging on my mobile phone. I've already had an account set up for me and some money transferred into it. So pay, space. And it was so simple to use. I just sent a text Zero. with the amount and the company I wanted to pay and the money was transferred to their account. Unlike premium rate texts, which are capped at £6, you can spend up to £800 with Loop. Oh, got a text message. Hang on. There we go. Confirmation. Payment received. Great, thanks. It's my first pasty and tea ordered by my bar phone. I wonder if it tastes any different. Apparently, they've, they've trialled this system around the corner at McDonald's and it was really successful, because all the kids, of course, are all mobile phone crazy. <laughs> Meanwhile, with an hour to go, I was back on the street and looking for Vikings. Same kind of thing, you know. Buying food and travelling, I noticed just how expensive Norway was. It's the third largest oil exporter and the most prosperous country in the world. As a result, prices are sky high. We're talking £10 for a beer expensive. I was rattling through the challenge, though. Excuse you, ladies, do you speak English? Yeah. Do you know where I can buy a Viking helmet? Viking, I think it's down there. The first part of my challenge was almost complete. <laughs> oh, I've never been so hel so helmet. I'm so excited I can't speak. I've never been so happy to find a plastic Viking's helmet. Look, oh yeah. Viking helmet. Now, it's surprisingly hard to find Viking helmets in Norway, and it's even harder when you can't use cash or cards. I was wet and cold, and not really having much fun. Then something occurred to me. Do you know what? What am I doing? I'm getting soaked to the skin, running around looking for a Viking helmet, when what I should, should be doing is using what I'm here to use, technology. The challenge rules said I had to go to Norway and buy a Viking helmet. They didn't say where from. A quick search of fancy dress shops back in the UK, and one Viking helmet was winging its way to my house. And I'm off, and I should be just about in time to check out the oldest ski jump in the world. What's that all about? The 
The Holman Collins ski jump stands 60 metres high and 470 metres above sea level. But I'm not here to be touristy. I've got 45 minutes left to get a picture and get to the airport. Oh, brilliant. Oh, it's fantastic. Right, all we've got to do now is get in there and take a picture. Gets the heart banging. Right. Ah. Tickets, prices. So I just need to find one relevant to me. The only way in was by cash or credit card. They didn't offer prepaid internet tickets, so I was stuck outside. Damn it, damn it, damn it! This is ridiculous. In the middle of Oslo, all they want is your mobile phone. Out here, they haven't got a clue. Your mobile phone won't even work, for all I know. Meanwhile, at the top, everything was going wonderfully. Cheese. I'm right at the top of the ski jump. Is that you down there? Yeah. Jason's right down the bottom. Are you coming up? Hello? I, try, I tried to get them to get my payment, but they won't accept it. See, cash wins. Cash wins here on the ski jump. I'll tell you what, there's nothing in the rules that says I can't take it from outside the compound, is there? <laughs> Come with me. This way, quick. Yay! There's the oldest ski jump in the world. Off to the airport. It was now a race back to the airport, but my seemingly endless supply of cash had nearly run out. I didn't have enough money for a taxi, and my only hope was a bus. Hey, look, that's Susie. <laughs> Go to the airport. I don't need to get a bus to the airport. You've, you not got, you've airport only got about now. half an hour to get to the airport. There's, there's plenty of room in the back here. Can I get, can I get a lift? No. Fantastic! Oh, so much pleasure. So much pleasure. All of those challenges that she's beaten me on. See you, Suze. Bye. I don't believe it. I am actually going to miss the flight. Unless I get to the airport in half an hour, I'm going to miss the flight. I am being serious. This is not television land either. I don't like this challenge anymore. You crazy Norwegians! Yay! You're looking good, baby! The warm, smug feeling I got from the despicable act of leaving Susie behind didn't last long. I don't believe... I don't believe this. I'm running on vapours. I've run out of petrol. I've got 22 miles to go to the airport and I'm on vapours. It never even occurred to me. I'm going to have to ditch the car and find a cab. With 15 minutes to go, I'd found a bus and I was on my way. It was a real race against time, though, and the stress was honestly killing me. This is just taking ages. As Susie sat helpless on the bus, I searched for a taxi, and amazingly, the very first one I found accepted mobile phone payment. The airport, as quick as you can, please. Now, it was a straight race. Jason in a taxi versus me on the bus. I'm going to miss this flight, and I am. Right. I'm going to run so fast off this bus. I'm just pulling into the airport now. Thank you. Have you got it? OK, brilliant. He's done. He's done. Where's the departures? Where's the gate? Where is it? Oh, yeah. Move out the way. I've got to get this bus. Quick, 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 quick. I'm going to miss it. Where's the, where's the board? Oh, there it is, there it is. Oh, yes, I've made it. Thank goodness for technology. <sighs> oh, It's closed. Bloody flight's closed. I'm stuck here. That was the last flight. Yeah. I don't believe it. Oh, right. God. Check you out with your little straps. <gasps> Did, did you actually get stranded in Norway? No, I thought that I was stuck in Norway, but there was another flight back later, so I did oh. actually get back. Well, that's not too bad then, is it? I was a bit moody, though. What do you look like in that hat? <laughs> How can you say that? You look ridiculous, I just said something to you. I only had a choice of one helmet to buy. You went online, you could have bought anyone. You bought one with hair. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. But listen, on a serious note... Yeah. 
how amazing that you could do so much with technology and you didn't need cash half the time. Our system's fantastic. Mm. A little bit buggy to begin with. It's not quite there yet, but um, I think bodes well for the future. I was going to say, I guess the point is, you know, we had to go to Norway for that, but in a very short amount of time, all that is going to be happening right here on our doorstep. But you know what the most important thing is, don't you? What? I just want another challenge. Mm.